Hey guys and welcome back for another video tutorial with Dr. Dalio. Today I'm going to be going over another tutorial. Um, more specifically I'm going to be doing 3D truss design. So in this case this bridge over here and we're going to be working with uh, ANSYS 17. So we're going to be getting some deformation results, uh, some axial results of these beam elements and I'll be showing you how to use uh, the shear moment diagram results and beam tools and etc. So uh, in order to get started, let's go ahead and start up ANSYS and launch a new project. So I'm going to make a new project over here. And let's load in a static structural. And here we're going to call this 3D truss bridge. In this case, it's a bridge. So double click on engineering data and then click on engineering data sources. And then under general materials, we're just going to add um, uh, structural steel. So click on the plus sign to add it to our library. So now we have structural steel as our engineering material. Close that out. Let's double click on geometry to load up design modeler. Once in design modeler, let's make sure our units are in meters. And let's click on the XY plane. Click on this button to look at. And we're going to go right ahead into the sketching tab. Change the settings uh, and enable the grid. Snap and show on 2D. The major grid spacing will change it to one meter. And let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. So here we go. That's one meter. And here we'll just put one for the minor steps. And then click on draw. We're going to draw a line. So we're going to draw the bottom part of our bridge. And the spacing will be um, two meters. So we'll draw one, two, three, four. And then we'll draw the top part of this bridge. Just keep drawing these lines. And then we will connect them here. And actually, I just realized we don't need this bottom part because uh, we're going to be adding a surface slab here. So let's go into Modify. And let's select these lines here. Using the Control key, let's select all of them. And then click on the Delete key to delete that. Then go back into Modeling and select the sketch here. And we're going to click on concept and choose lines from sketches and the base objects are already selected. We'll click apply and then click on generate. So now we have a line body here. Next what we want to do is create a pattern. So we're going to pattern this line body. We're going to create and we're going to click on pattern. And we have this geometry already selected. We'll click on apply. And then under direction we're going to choose the uh, another plane here. So let's say the YZ plane and click on this axis and then click on apply and then we're going to put the spacing to I think two meters and let's just see what that gives us so there we go we just made a pattern of these line bodies which we will need to add a cross section to very soon now the last part is we need to join the top and create line bodies at the top so we're going to offset a plane so we're going to offset the YZ plane no sorry the ZX plane and then we'll click on it and click on this button here for new plane. And then we will transform this uh, about the um, Z axis. And we'll offset it, I think, two meters. Yep, that's about two meters. And then we'll click on generate. And now we have plane four. We will click on sketching, settings, grid. We will enable the grid spacings again. Click on the draw tab and then the line tool. Um, let's just zoom in here. And then let's join these up. And then the last one here. And then go back into modeling. And then under this sketch, we will create concept uh, lines from sketches, apply, and then generate. And now we have this as our full line body. Now the next thing we need to do is create the um, base slab here at the bottom. So under the ZX plane, we're going to go sketching and we will enable the grid again and we will draw a rectangle and we'll draw it from the origin all the way to this point here and then we'll go into modeling and then we'll choose the sketch and then we will go surface from sketches under the concept tool click apply and the thickness I think we'll just put 0.1 for now and click on generate now the next thing you'll notice if you click on the line body is that you need to select a cross section so we'll go into concept, cross section, 
In this case, we'll choose a rectangular cross section. So here we're going to change the cross section from 0.01 to 0.05 by 0.05 meters for the base and the height of this cross section here. And then we'll click on Generate. And now we have a rectangular cross section. And then the next thing we'll do is associate that cross section here by clicking on this and clicking on Rect1, which now associates the cross section to this line body. Now, if you wanted to change that, you can change it from a rectangular to uh, any other kind of cross section. If you wanted a circular, um, you could have a circular, you can have an eye section, etc. So now that we have our surface body and our line bodies, we can go ahead and minimize this and now launch up model by double clicking on cell number four here. Great, so now that's loaded, we're going to go and assign the materials. So we will assign here uh, steel for the line bodies. And the base, I mean, I guess would be concrete, but uh, we're just going to put steel for this example. And we need to create a connection between our line bodies and the surface at the bottom here. So we'll right click on connection and insert a manual contact region. And we will hide this surface for now by right clicking on it and hiding it. And the contact, we will use the vertex filter and we will hold control and select all of these vertices. Once we have that, we'll click on apply for the contact. Then we can right click show all bodies and let's go ahead and hide this body, the line bodies. And then for the target, we will use the edge filter and select these two edges using the control key, clicking on apply. And then if we show all bodies, now we can see we have our contact body view our con and our target body view correctly set up. Next, under Mesh, we will generate a mesh and see what it looks like so far. And there we have it. Next up, what we're going to do is add the, um, is add the boundary conditions and, and loads. So we'll add a fixed support on this end here. And we will add a displacement. And we'll click on Apply, and we'll just constrain this edge in the Y direction. So we'll click on Constant, and that means that this edge cannot move in the y direction, but it's free to move in the x and the z directions. Next up, we're going to add some solutions. So let's add the uh, stress, equivalent von Mises stress. And we can go and add deformation, total deformation. And we'll add a few ones later. Let's just go right click and solve this right now. Oh, and I forgot to add a structural load. So let's go right click and insert a pressure. We'll click on the surface, apply, and we'll enter 0.2 megapascals and make sure that the vector is pointing downward, normal 2, and then we'll right click and solve again. And there we go. There we have our stress results and we have our total deformation results. And what we could do is maybe this mesh here could be a little bit more finer so we could go into the sizing and we can just see how big these are. Let's go into metric here. We can see that the sizing of each element here is about half a meter. We can choose here the max face size. Instead of 0.5, we can put, let's say, 0.2. And we can generate that mesh again. So now we have a much finer mesh. And let's go and solve that once again. And now we have a much finer result. Let's change our units back into millimeter kilograms. So as you can see here, this maximum stress on the platform here is about 123 megapascals. We have our deformation, but the stress doesn't show us the uh, results for the beam. So in order to do that, we're going to insert, and we're going to insert beam tools. And then here we can right-click and evaluate these results. And then we're here, and now we have our direct stress results uh, on the beam. So it's about 258, which uh, might be limit for steel in this case. Uh, I think our yield is around 250 megapascals. So that might not pass the test. So we can either enlarge the cross section or we can change the material of these trusses. We can also find the axial force by right clicking and then inserting beam results, axial force. We can also right click beam results, let's say um, bending moment. And we can evaluate these results. So here we have the axial force in Newtons of total bending moment. And if you want to get the diagram, we can go into uh, Beam Results, Shear Moment Diagram. And in this case, you need to enter a path. So we can go into Model, right-click, 
insert a new construction geometry. Then we can right click on this, insert a path. And for the path, we're going to choose, let's say, this point here and then use that as the start. And then for the end, we'll click to change and use this point here and click apply. So now we have a path running along the top from here to here. You can change this to any other beam that you want to use. I'm just using this in, as an example. And now in our shear moment diagram, we can choose our path. And for the, for the uh, geometry, we will select, oops, sorry, I made a mistake. Let's go back to path. We can't use uh, two points. We have to use an edge. So let's use edge and we will select these edges by holding the control key and then clicking on apply here. And then now that we have that path selected, now we're allowed to uh, solve this result. And there you have it. There is your total shear moment diagram. And you can also change that. Instead of having the total shear force, you can have the total bending moment. And then you can evaluate those results as well. So here are your bending moment diagrams. And uh, you can change that to total displacement, etc. So those are the diagrams. These are the bending moments visualized here, the axial force. You can also get uh, reaction forces by going into probe and going into force reaction. And we can say the uh, fixed support. So we can evaluate the reaction force at that support. And we can also go into, let's say, the force reaction. And we can choose the displacement to see the displacement force results. And that's the reaction force there. So here we have our two reaction forces, our diagrams, our axial forces, etc. And here you can change the scale of the deformation. Let's say if you want it to be true scale, you can put it to 1. And if you want to exaggerate the scale, we can put 53. That's slightly too exaggerated. We'll keep it at auto scale. And if you want to animate the results, you can click on this button here under the graph tab for animate. And now you can see it animate the load from 0 to 100%. And we can see that these are the beams that are failing most quickly. You can stop that. If you want to export this, you can also export this video here. And let's just see the safety factor by using the stress tool, max equivalent stress. And here the theory will be equivalent stress and the limit will be the yield in this case. And we can evaluate those results. And click on safety factor and we can see here that for the platform we have about a safety factor of 2, which is somewhat reasonable. Maybe five would have been better. Again, you can improve that by increasing the thickness of this material or you can also change the material. So I hope that was helpful and um, I hope you learned quite a few things. We went over um, trusses or line bodies and ANSYS, surface bodies, path creations, and um, you know axial force diagrams, uh, shear moment diagrams, etc. If you like this video, please give me a like below. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them. And uh, we'll see you next time.